In order to access Google Classroom, if you are using a Gmail account, it depends, a, the, the, the use of Google Classroom depends a lot on whether or not you are using a Gmail account or whether or not you're using a different Google account if your school has um, enabled the G Suite for Education. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain it from the idea that you are not using um, a, a, a G Suite account. Most schools that have gone through the process of becoming Google schools would have had some training regarding the use of um, Google of, of Google Classroom. So we're going to work on the basis that you don't have Google um, or that you don't have access to it. Right, so um, let's quickly maximize here. In order to get to to um, your to get to Google Classroom, if you click on the Google Apps waffle and you scroll all the way down, you should see Google Classroom. If you don't see Google Classroom, then you can simply enter the the address classroom um, dot google dot com. Right. If you enter that, enter that address, it will take you to Google Classroom. Now, yours will not look like mine um, because I've already created some classrooms. You will see something that says add or join your first classroom. So what we want to do is we want to create a classroom. Um, <clears throat> so if we simply click on this plus create or join a class, the plus we say create class. And it'll give you the whole, um, all the information. Essentially what they're trying to tell you is it's a better idea to use it with a G Suite education account, but we are not going to. So I've read and understood. Um, so our class name, we're going to call our class, uh, whatever we want to call it, let's say grade 12, English. Um, if you want to add these different elements, you can, but the only thing you actually need to add is class name. So let's just create this class. With that, it'll take a while to set up everything that you do. While it's creating it, just to explain essentially what Google Classroom really is, Google Classroom is a, is, is a front end for Google Drive. Everything that you, all the content that you put onto Google Drive, Google Classroom manages the sharing and accessibility settings of the content. So using Google Classroom, there are different ways that you can use Google Classroom, but generally if you want to use it on it at its most effective, the best way to use it is to make sure that you put your content onto Google Drive and then from Google Classroom, you're going to share that content with your learners. So what we're looking at today is just a very basic overview of how Classroom works. We're not going to go into a lot of the details because there's some elements to it that become quite complicated, but we're really going to look at it in its most simple form. So we've looked at how to create a Classroom. Then the second and obviously probably the most important element is how do we get our learners onto Google Classroom? You'll see there's a class code over here that we can um, that we can select. We're obviously not going to have the opportunity to, to display it, but if you could in your classroom, you would display it to your learners like this. In order to get your, your, your learners to join your Google Classroom, what they will have to do is they will have to either on their mobile devices download the Google Classroom app, or they will have to on a, on a desktop, go to the address classroom.google.com. Please note you must have a Gmail account in order to access this Google Classroom. All that they will then do is they will, the same way that we said create a class, they will simply add a class by clicking on the plus button and entering the class code. Then in, through that, they will join the classroom. Once they've started joining, you will be able to go to people and you will see how many students are on here. An alternative way that you can do it is you can invite students individually by entering all their email addresses. So if you've got a list of email addresses for learners, you can do it this way around. But the other way around I found is a lot easier. If you want to, you can have more than one teacher in a classroom. So we can say we can invite another teacher. So I will, for example, add Gilbert to my um, I, will, I can add Gilbert to my classroom and I will invite him I will, um, and he will, he will get an email that asks him, do you want to, oh, sorry, in this case I can't invite him because we are not from the same, uh, on the same domain, he's using his Western Cape 
email ad account and not his a Gmail account, right? So we can add multiple teachers as long as you're all using a Gmail account. Now, just to explain the difference between stream and classwork, stream is similar to sending WhatsApp messages to um, learners or sending or using something like a Facebook, we are sending messages. How it will work is everything that you share. So we're going to click here. It'll immediately give you the option. Who do you want to share it with? One of the nice things is if you've got multiple classes, you can share it on multiple classes as well. You can select um, the students if you want to share it with only specific students. Generally speaking, if we click on share, it's going to share it in that classroom to all the students because this is for the most part what we want to use. All right. I know we don't have a lot of time left, but so I'm going to go through this quickly. But I also want to make sure that we go through it thoroughly that you understand how it works. So we can share with our classroom and we can say just um, welcome to uh, your new Google Classroom. All right, so they will get this message. Now, it makes sense to put something like that on the stream because it, as time goes on, more messages will start populating in the stream and slowly but surely everything will start moving down. What you can also do on the stream is within the stream, there's the option to add things. If you add things, it'll give you three options. You can either add something from Google Drive. You can just simply share a link. So in other words, a URL. The little um, <coughs> paper clip means you're going to upload a file from your computer, or you can add links from YouTube. So those are the basic things that you're going to use. Again, as I said, my suggestion is, Upload your files to Google Drive and then share it from Google Drive, not from your computer. Um, then when we get to, so let's just say Google Drive, we're going to select something we want to share. Um, <clears throat> let's share this, uh, this, in, this, this one that we want to share. Okay, add, who on the, on that or draft the scribe. So we're going to share. We're going to share this. We need to have a basic message. Please um, read the following Google Doc and complete the questions. Right. So I'm gonna, just going to post this. When you post, you can post it immediately, or you can schedule it. So we can we we can sit and we can basically schedule a whole bunch of posts that will automatically go off. So we're going to post it, and then this appears right um, okay so in this instance I'm trying to share a file that is not actually my own file so I will have to make a copy of the file in order to share it with my learners um, generally speaking you're not going to run into that issue because you're going to just share files that you have uploaded to Google Drive right so while that is um, while that is posted then they will see a message like this they will get a notification that there's a, a new message in their classroom Classwork is more effective in the sense of arranging and organizing your, your content. So within classwork, you can now create different topics. And within each topic, you can add, excuse me for a second. That is my son, just bear with me. Right, so we can add topics here. So let's say we want to add a topic called poetry. And the good thing about classwork, unlike the stream, what happens with the stream, given time, everything will just simply scroll up and scroll up and scroll up and disappear. Within classwork, you'll be able to create different elements. So let's say we want to create a, um, just create material. And then within this material, it'll give you the, diff it will give you the option. So we want to say, um, uh, on the opdracht. And we want to add Google Drive. Well, let's say rather we want we don't want to do that. We want to create. Okay, we'll look at that next week. Um, Google Drive, and we just say recent. We want to just upload this recipe of a spina copita. Okay, so then it adds different elements. Oh, sorry, again, using someone else's content. Um, So we just we're just going to add this file. When I add this file, I can post, but I select I want to add it under the poetry topic. What now happens 
is everything that we add, we essentially create different folders for the content that we want to use. Now, if you look at this, how it is displayed under classwork and how it is displayed under stream, it is a lot easier to then find things within this. It immediately creates navigation here on the side where I can select the different topics. Um, and everything that you post in classwork is automatically shared in stream. So here it says, Jakob van Ike posted new material on that opdracht. Right. So in summary, in, in, in summary, when we are using Google Classroom, generally for a lot of what we want to do is we want to create our classroom and then add our learners to our classroom and then add the different content that we want to share with them under the classwork because it makes it a lot easier to find the information later, later along. If you consider when we started this training session, the first thing that we said is we want to look at more efficient ways of sharing information and organizing information for our learners. Um, if we're going to post everything under stream, it is going to essentially be the same as just sharing it with them on WhatsApp because they will again have to scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll in order to find anything. If we add it to, the, add it to classwork, it becomes easier for them to navigate and to find content. Um, one last thing about Google Classroom, and we're going to look at this in more detail next week. Um, generally speaking, Google likes working with other Google products. So while many of us will not be using Google Docs and Google Slides, when you upload content to Google Drive, it becomes very easy to convert these elements. Now, the reason why I'm referring to this specifically is this, the file sizes of, a, of those, of those um, items are generally smaller than the original one that you, that you would have uploaded in the first instance. And the second instance, they are specifically tailor-made to display well on a handheld device. Again, many of our learners are using cell phones to connect to the content that we're trying to share with them. So we need to be very mindful of how the content that we are sharing is presented on a cell phone and not just simply what we see on our screen in front of us. So when we convert these files and we will look at how to convert files next week, um, next week, Tuesday, we will have our, our next session at, um, and it starts at 1030. So we're going to look at how do we convert content? How do we create content and then obviously how we can share it. So our first session today, in summary, because I think we are now starting. To There's a question, Yaku, in the chat. There's a question. Okay. Um, yes, once you, um, so the, the, the stream, they will not necessarily be able to see everything that was said in the stream, but all the content that you've uploaded, if you put it, if you um, added all the content under classwork, they will be able to access all of that um, very easily at a later stage. So it is a good idea. I often feel it's better to create, um, it's better to, to actually add all the content beforehand so that when the learners join the classroom, they can immediately see, okay, here's content that I can start working through and start accessing. But the other question that um, Rousseau is asking, this class drive folder, how does this work? Be very careful because the class drive folder can be very misleading. What happens is everyone who is on this classroom automatically has their own class drive folder. So as a teacher, if I have a class drive folder and I click on it, it immediately takes me to Google Drive. It will show files that I have put in into that drive. However, if I now go and copy files from my drive into this drive, it doesn't mean it is visible to the, um, it becomes visible to the learners. So how the class drive folder actually works, the intention behind the class drive folder is every learner will, if they click on classwork, they will see a class drive folder and they can put their own files that is related to that classroom into that class drive folder. So, so that they can still, um, so that they can also organize their Google Drive more effectively. So be careful if you add files into that folder, it does not mean it's visible for the learners. Um, it means it's, it's, a, it's a way of keeping your content organized in a way. Generally, my use of, um, of Google Classroom, I have never really found the Class Drive folder to be useful for me. I've got different folders that I use in order to add my content. Um, 
that, I, that I've always preferred to use rather than the class drive folder. Note on the Google Calendar as well, all the learners will automatically have a calendar added. So if you go break out to Google Calendar, you can also add certain calendar items that are related to this classroom. Um, we're not going to go into detail how Google Calendar works now, but those of you who know, who know have some understanding of Google Calendar, if you click on Google Calendar, you can, um, you can add events that, for that classroom specifically.